Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacRig Studio. I'm Mark Spencer. Steve Martin joins me today, as usual. Yes. No surprise there. <laughs> We're going to continue our discussion on yes. Final Cut. Final Cut Pro 10.0.6, which has a ton of new, um, basically, workflow features, right? Things that allow you to get work done faster and easier. Yes, efficiently. Yes. And today, we're going to be talking about Red Raw, Raw Workflow. Red Raw Workflow. Right. So anything that was shot on a red camera, like a Scarlet or an Epic or something yeah, I mean, in between. A lot of, I mean, that, pop, that camera is extremely popular, and it's shot all over the world. It's, I mean, look at all the features shot with the red camera now. I mean, uh, it's... I mean, just go to Red's website and see all of the films. It's amazing. So this is not an incidental uh, thing they've added. It's, it's, it's huge. And what is it that they've added? Well, they've added the ability to bring in the raw data natively, or ingest Red Raw natively into Final Cut so that you can manipulate the data and you have the full access to all the 12 bits of data to be able to like color grade and you know bring out the detail and the blacks. Because almost like you're working with like raw pictures. In a, in a, like images, in a, like, like shooting raw for exactly. pictures. Okay. Wow, so uh, let's see how... Oh, so do you need anything special to be able to do oh, this? you do need something special. You need a red plug-in. Okay. You need to download... How much is, now, how much is that going to cost me? It's uh, only forty nine ninety nine. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. It's free. It's free, yeah. Okay. Red's, Red's, I'm getting... Red.com. Free download plug-in, the plug -in. and you're going to be able to ingest Red. So now, let's, let's do that. I'm going to hit Command-I, bring up the... Unified import window. Yes, which we talked about uh, in the previous last lesson. week. If you missed that, you might want to check that out. Yeah. Now we're going to look at uh, importing it. Now, normally with Reddit, it's shot on a uh, solid state drive and it's cloned and then handed to you or what have you. Either way, the, the data structures need to be maintained so that you can then get into them and then import the individual RDC clips or okay. red digital clips. Okay. Now, just so happens I have a red folder uh, clips right there on the desktop. And this is new. I didn't mention this in the last lesson. You have a favorite section that you can actually store favorite import targets. Here I have just two, desktop and, of course, you. But I can actually store frequently used folders. Like maybe I'm working on a network. I have all my sound effects or I'm on a server and a, on, a, on a storage area network. I'm, you can have... All of this content in one folder is only one click away. So how do you put something into there? Oh, I, I don't know. No, <laughs> no, it's actually, it's actually, it's actually um, pretty simple. Like I'm going to take that red folder yeah. and I'm going to drop it right on the favorites word. Right under the word favorites. Boom. There done. it is. Okay. There it is. All right. So now every time I want access to that target, I select it and it appears in the browser great, list. Great. Great. So yeah. that could be, I could, like you say, on an XSAN, that could be where everybody's dropping clips and yeah. you're bringing mm -hmm. in what you want to use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can see here from the browse list that I have my red digital clip folders and then the R3Ds, which is essentially that's your raw data right there. And this is huge. Look at this frame size, 5120 by 2700. That's a, that's a 5K image and there's okay. a 2K. And uh, here's the best part. I'm playing, I'm playing these red clips. I'm about to play them off of my Mac, uh, Mark's shiny new Retina Mac. You want it to be yours. Oh, yeah. You must have <laughs> <It's> so awesome. <laughs> this thing is great. So this is like 5K image. Now this was well, this that's was, 2K. This, this one. This one's 2K. I'll play this first because it's overcranked. But I'm gonna, I'm playing this without any additional hardware. All right. So this is a red raw 2K clip that you're playing on a laptop. That's right, on a laptop. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty neat. That was surprising. Now here's one. Here's a, now here's a 5K image playing off the laptop. It's a wow. really exciting, that, that pen there. But <laughs> you can see it's playing. Now, here's the thing. Uh, there is additional hardware. If you're working with RED all the time, they uh, RED sells a card called the RED Rocket card that you can install in your Mac or put an expansion chassis or what have you. And, and actually, I haven't tried an expansion chassis, but definitely in the towers, it'll actually speed up the encoding and playback. So if okay. you're transcoding, it's, it'll certainly give you a performance boost. Okay, so okay. And that's probably what you want. If you, really, if you really want to play back 5K material, exactly. the, the fact that you can even do it at all on, on a, a laptop is sick. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. here, here it is. So uh, look, in the, last, in the last episode, I talk about selecting. In this case, because it's a file on a drive, I can't make selections. I can only bring in the, the entire clip. clip. So okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to select those two clips, mm -hmm. and I'm going to choose Import Selected. And uh, then you have this window. I'm going to create a new event. I'm just call this a Red Vineyard. All right, whatever. You can name it whatever you want. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, transcoding for a moment. Okay. Uh, you can bring it in raw and work with it raw, but in some cases, if you don't plan on doing any manipulation because it's, that's someone else is going to do that in another application, yeah. you might want to create optimized media or proxy. Uh, Optimize is going to create what's called ProRes 4444. And by the way, a big dialogue came up when I checked that. And 
and, and essentially what a dialog says is this. Um, if you do transcode, you're not going to be able to make changes because it, because what Final Cut wants to do is bake your your image changes into the transcoded file. Okay. So if it just saying it's kind of just like kind of warning you of that that you're going to have to regenerate the optimized media yeah. if you decide to make changes. So if if you do think you want to make changes to the raw media, you might want to skip transcoding for now. Exactly. Um, so I would say okay. you might want to. In fact, we're going to yeah. do that now. Though, so we can actually show the. And when you, if you do choose to transcode for the optimized media, it's still going to be 5K, right? It's still going to be this huge still gonna file. Be, it's going to be exactly the same resolution that's reported in the in the metadata column. It's but it'll be, be that. ProRes 422. ProRes, oh no, ProRes 4444. Oh, it does 4x4. Four four. It does, okay. to, to give maximum fidelity to, okay. the, to the picture. So okay. all other instances is 4x4, four four, as you say, 4x422. Four four two two. Four two two, but in this instance, it's 4x4. Four four. Ah, okay. okay. So um, okay, so let's go ahead and just go ahead and bring this in. It's, I'm just going to, we already, oh yeah, import. There's a little import button. <laughs> and uh, oh, I'm going to go ahead and close the window. And there, there's Eclipse. It's they're right ready there. to be there, there. There it is, ready to be worked with. Since right. we just imported references, basically, to yeah, we didn't, we didn't copy, copy the media. Right. These are big, big files. Big, big. So I'm going to select that. Now I want to start working with the the image. I'm going to monkey with the image a little bit. I'm going to hit Command Four to open the inspector, and uh, I'm going to go to the Info button, and you'll see a new button down here called Modify Red Raw Settings. And Oh, by the way, while we're here, I should also point out that we're only working with original media. Notice Optimize and Proxy Media hasn't been generated. Right, because we decided not to do that. Exactly. So that's what the little red triangles mean. It, it doesn't exist. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with these settings here. And this is kind of like the settings that the camera operator used. It, it should show you kind of how it was set, and then you it's kind of like adjusting the camera after the fact. Yes. It gives you, uh -huh. uh, essentially allows, it gives you all the tools of, of manipulating exposures. You can see color space. Rec 7 or 9 is like an HD color space. You can... Play, uh, set up different uh, logs. You could uh, set, set, change the exposure, change the ISO. Um, ISO, the Kelvin, the tint. Uh, you can, you know, crush the shadows. I'm gonna crush the shadows a little bit. Um, let me boost the saturation. I can play with the contrast. I mean, you, look, look, look! What you can really pull out detail. You can, you can essentially create looks. Yep. Because all you're yep. really doing is man manipulating um, the, the the metadata for the file, and and it's really um, so it's non-destructive. It's not completely non-destructive. You can always revert back to original settings by clicking this little pop-up here, or even neutral values, which kind of goes not to what they set the camera to, but so the default camera settings. Exactly. But let's say you do uh, want to uh, want to apply that. You just click apply, and those settings are immediately applied to the camera. You can see like, you can see all the manipulations okay. there. Okay. And they haven't been baked in. They're just it's it's a sidecar file. It's or a side, It's a it's little side. It it's a red. Um, RDM file, red digital metadata file. Okay. That's storing all the changes. The information. Exactly. So, so this is as if, if you had set the camera up to do this, it would look like this here, but you set the camera up kind of neutrally, so you have much more latitude, uh, latitude to manipulate it now. Okay. Exactly. Um, and I'm not going to go ahead and do it in this clip. You, you get the general idea, yep. but I just, I want to say at this point, let's say you want to, you, you, you change, you, you've made the look you want, and now you want to bake the changes into your optimized media. You have two ways to do this. One is to click the Generate Proxy uh, button down here and Generate Proxy Media. Or if you go to the File menu, you can go down and choose, let's see, um, Transcode, Transcode media. media. And uh, this option allows you to create either optimized or proxy. Or both. Or both. Yeah, and then this is where the red rocket card could really come in, is that, um, as you can see here, it's transcoding this file, and, it's, and, it, and, it could, and it could take some time to do that, depending on how fast your Mac is. Right, and it's, it's and a it's huge 5K file. huge it's, file. It's, if you're doing a ton of, what if you're doing 100 shots? Right, it's, right. This can be really uh, kind of a laborious, long uh, process, so this is where the additional hardware can really come in. And even if you were doing proxy, which is quarter resolution, right? right a quarter, quarter resolution of, of 5K is still like a 2K file. It's still it, much bigger than it's, full it's HD. Still, it's still big. Big file. But um, if you want to actually edit and playback, you can do that. Now, you can still do the traditional workflow through Red Cine X and, and doing that stuff. You've got a lot of clips you want to process. But this lets you check out a shot, like on set. Right on set or, or right in the edit bay. The director says, can I see a little bit more? Can, I see, can you bring up the shadows or bring down the shadows? You can do it. Right Right now in Final Cut yeah, Pro, you get to know what exactly what you can do with the file. By the way, look at Mark. Mark with his uh, little, uh, you can see that all co all his cores are working on this. Yeah, I like to keep time. an eye on them. Well, all these guys are slacking off a little bit, though. I see. Yeah, they are they're slacking. working pretty hard. They're slackers yeah. there. Okay. <laughs> um, one last thing about Red Workflow is that it's automatically scales to the project you're working in. So here's a 1080 project down here. If I take this clip 
and uh, I'm going to just go quickly set an in and out point for it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect that clip, let's say right here. Um, I want you to see this. It automatically kind of scales it. A 5K image, it's going to scale it to the working resolution. So this is a, another really huge fe feature. If I go into the video and go down to spatial conform, it's set for fit. I can do fill. Or, and better yet, this is what's cool, I can do none, which gives me the, a full range. Whoa. So now you really get a sense of how huge this file is because you are in a 1920 by 1080 project. Right. And now it's blown this 5K image up to the 100% size. Yes. And, uh, no, no, it says 90% size. Well, yeah. right now, it's, I'm, I'm, there's, I'm, the beauty of this is now I have the full raster, the full 5K yes. image. I can move around and focus. I can reframe. I can... Uh, and look at the, I mean, look at that, I mean, look at the in, a, in, a, in, a, in, HD set, in an HD frame, look at that detail. That's only like a, you're only seeing a part of the image right, right there. Right, right. So, tremendous, tremendous workflow enhancement in Final awesome. Pro 10. Great. Steve, thank you. I think anybody who works with RED or is considering RED can see the benefit of being able to work with it directly in, in Final Cut Pro 10. Um, if you want to know more about how to do this and other features of Final Cut Pro 10.0.6, rippletraining.com. You have a training mm -hmm. specifically on the new features. On 10, red. Yeah, we have a chapter on red. 10.0.6 um, in depth. In depth. And then if you're learning Final Cut Pro 10 for the first time, you might want to look at the Apple Pro Video Series, Apple Pro Video Series, also on rippletraining.com. We're a little tired and punchy. Yes. Um, anyway, thank you, Steve, and thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.